According to so-called experts in the trucking industry, the Tesla semi-truck is straight out of a science fiction book. Automakers have doubted Elon Musk's grand vision in trucking, labeling it as pure fantasy. But today Tesla is proving that the semi-truck is very much a reality and is about to get even more advanced. Construction has begun on a colossal semi-truck factory in Nevada, projected to churn out 50,000 units annually. This announcement confirms the seismic shift coming to the trucking world which is about to undergo its own disruption by electric trucks. A full production capability of 50,000 units would put Tesla ahead of every Class A truck maker in the United States save Freightliner, but would certainly make a dent in the existing industry as new truck sales are siphoned away from legacy brands who simply have no offering to compete with Tesla Semi's range and functionality. But that's not all. The factory isn't just producing the semi-truck. It's working on the cutting-edge semi-truck 2.0, promising specs that will further blow the competition out of the water. The current model, still in its pilot phase with early deliveries to Pepsi, is still fairly shrouded in mystery. Elon Musk has yet to unveil many of its groundbreaking and convenient features that are under wraps. But Tesla is quietly gearing up to redefine commercial transportation. As senior manager Dan Priestley, who runs semi-truck engineering at Tesla, puts it, we are technologically ready, now it's time for scaling. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and quarterly financial data going back up to 15 years, and it's all freely available. Tesla's pilot customer, PepsiCo, is beginning to take delivery of a batch of 50 new Tesla semi-trucks to add to the roughly 36 vehicles they already have. It also appears that other customers such as Walmart and Costco have been spotted with Tesla semis and might be testing out this new piece of technology within their fleets. But Tesla still seems to be keeping very quiet on the semi with many secrets Elon Musk has yet to unveil. For one thing, they don't want to give away too much to competitors and have certainly been very selective with their deliveries, such that competitors wouldn't be able to get their hands on one even if they wanted to, to tear it down. They also don't want to make the specifications well known to future potential customers just yet, as the specs may be about to change for the better. But Tesla itself will be doing a complete overhaul on the semi-truck before it truly goes to mass production in late 2025 and early 2026. At the Alternative Clean Transportation Expo in Las Vegas this week, Dan Priestley, who heads the Tesla semi-truck program, reassured customers that Tesla was ready to begin scaling this unique vehicle, and the technology inside was ready for prime time. Priestley started off his presentation outlining the two versions of the semi-truck, one with 300 miles of range and one with 500, the latter of which Tesla demonstrated at their prior semi-truck delivery event to Pepsi, showing a 500-mile drive fully loaded with 81,000 pounds. Pepsi has also confirmed being able to achieve 1,000 miles of travel distance in a single day with the semi, which turns out to be highly competitive with diesel. Priestley goes on to say that the smaller Tesla semi weighs under 20,000 pounds, and the 500-mile one weighs under 23,000 pounds. Wait, what? 23,000 pounds? This is a bombshell that Priestley just dropped on every armchair engineer who's been commenting on Tesla's Semi since 2017. Some people thought the Semi would weigh 45,000 pounds, which means the government's exception for adding an extra 2,000 pounds to the maximum load wouldn't make much of a difference. Other closer estimates were for 31,000 pounds and as low as 27,000 pounds. Even some third parties believed that just the batteries alone would weigh 26,000 pounds, which didn't make much sense as we debunked last year that multiplying an 85 kilowatt hour Model S battery by 10 times would still come in at half that weight and Tesla would be making their battery pack from the ground up, thus being more compact and efficient. But a 23,000 pound electric semi truck, apparently defying the laws of physics, is a game changer and frightening for the industry 
because it's completely in line with its diesel competitors. Dan Priestley highlights that diesel trucks can be replaced one for one with the Tesla Semi in order to achieve the same amount of work. They wouldn't need a fleet of semis in order to replace a single diesel truck. So it turns out diesel is much easier to replace than people thought or wanted you to think. The traditional competitors in the space have nothing like this. Freightliner, the number one player in the industry with 40% market share, has an electric truck with a range of just 230 miles, less than half the Tesla Semi, and it takes 90 minutes for an 80% charge of this reduced range, so just 184 miles, whereas the Tesla can get 70% charge in just 30 minutes, which is 350 miles, already more than Freightliner's eCascadia's entire range. Again, the Tesla Semi charges to double the range of a Freightliner in one-third the time. But really, replacing expensive diesel with cheap electricity is the real competition, and one of the top selling points for customers, as Tesla says they can save $200,000 in the first three years on just fuel alone. Keep in mind that the semi-truck is a game changer when it comes to replacing fossil fuels when you consider the size of the diesel vehicle it will be replacing, the uptime up to 1,000 miles per day, and semis make up 1% of the global fleet but contribute to 18% of the emissions. In a sense, that's almost like a single semi-truck is equivalent to 18 Model 3s in terms of fuel and emissions. 50,000 trucks would be like putting 900,000 Model 3s on the road, which is actually more than the number of Model 3s that Tesla produces. And so the truck will just begin to impact the fossil fuel industry, but it will immediately and drastically cut costs for commercial transportation, which is actually very positive for end consumers who have seen non-stop inflation, a portion of it due to the transportation of goods. In order to support this, Tesla has new mega chargers which they're preparing to deploy at scale starting along Pepsi's routes. This may relate to Tesla's supercharger reorg and Elon Musk firing the supercharger growth team at the company, which I find interesting because people have come up to me, I'm talking serious engineers who work at big tech companies who are worried about me being able to charge my car now that the team is supposedly gone. And I'm not joking, this actually happened. First off, 95% of my charging is done at home, and I don't think Tesla controls every electrical outlet on the planet, but also superchargers still work just fine. Dan Priestley states that it costs Tesla $500 per kilowatt of installed supercharger capacity, and that Tesla will be spending $500 million this year on charging. This equates to about 1,000 mega chargers at 1 megawatt each, but of course Tesla will be splitting this amount with the rest of Tesla's charging business, for which it looks like Tesla spent closer to $1.5 billion on last year given this cost per kilowatt. So based on these calculations, they're cutting spending this year by a third. Again, this is for new chargers only and doesn't count operating the existing fleet of chargers. However, Elon Musk says he wants to focus less on adding new sites and more on uptime and expanding the existing sites. This actually makes a lot of sense, since Tesla already has an expansive network with great locations, some of which do need more capacity. Even competitors such as Ford's Jim Farley have touted Tesla's excellent supercharger locations, and Ford has been one of the first automakers to switch to Tesla's NAX standard to take advantage of this. While supercharger spending will be lower, Tesla will have to start preparing its mega charger network for the 50,000 new semis that will be produced each year starting closer to 2026. It may also be easier to build out a commercial mega charger network than it was to build out a consumer facing one since Tesla can take advantage of its partnerships with commercial customers putting chargers along their trucking routes and at truck stops and they may be able to add mega chargers at their existing locations meaning no need to locate new real estate to support trucks. Now the channel Out of Spec Reviews was at the Las Vegas event and added some behind the scenes insights for the semi. They gave a sneak preview of the inside of the side frunk, which is another storage compartment and appears to be lesser known, and adds to the capacity provided by the actual frunk that the vehicle will also have. Out of Spec Reviews also appears to confirm that the three plaid motors is still on the table for the semi. 
And interestingly, when given a ride in the Tesla Semi, they weren't allowed to film, as there appears to be still many secrets that Tesla doesn't want to leak to competitors, perhaps while the truck is being operated. Now besides Pepsi, Tesla has one other major customer testing the Semi truck, and that's themselves. Tesla uses their own semis to transport battery packs from the Gigafactory in Nevada to Fremont, California, and so their experience will allow them to support new types of use cases for the semi, again new for Tesla, which they'll be bringing to their customers. Dan Priestley cites car hauling, which is already something that Tesla does a lot for transporting their own cars. They also want to add support for electrified reefer trailers, these would be semi-trucks essentially carrying refrigerators, but powered directly from the semi's battery pack. This would replace the need for small diesel engines that are typically used to power reefers today. Tesla is really going after the fossil fuel industry in every niche that they operate in, but for a reefer it makes a lot of sense to simply plug it into the semi's tractor, just like a regular fridge, instead of having to add another diesel engine which requires maintenance and fuel, etc. This was likely something they learned from PepsiCo, which frequently transports beverages. Finally, the new semi-truck factory will be making an upgraded type of truck. The current semis coming out of the production facility, still near the Nevada factory, are using 2170 battery cells, which is convenient because it's located right next to the factory where they're produced. However, despite Semi's industry-leading specs by a long shot, Elon Musk expects to further reduce the battery size of the vehicle while still maintaining the range. At 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, the Semi has an 850 kilowatt hour battery pack, and Elon Musk plans to reduce this to 800 kilowatt hours or even 750 kilowatt hours, which would contribute to reducing the weight of the vehicle even more and therefore increasing the load it can carry. That's probably one reason Tesla has been very secretive on the weight of the vehicle, because it may be about to get a lot lighter. If Tesla follows through with its plans to build the 4680 battery cell facility at Giga Nevada, they could put these cells into the vehicle, the same ones that are used in the Cybertruck, to potentially help reduce the weight. But Tesla always iterates over their products and finds efficiencies in new areas that they'll be bringing to Semi 2.0. I also like that the factory itself is brand new, so it's almost like Tesla is building a mini gigafactory for semi-trucks using its latest gigafactory technology in terms of factory design. This is much better than shoehorning the production site into an existing factory. And again, Tesla treats the factories as the product, and so making the factory more efficient works its way into the vehicle itself. For instance, if the factory is cheaper to produce, or if they can ramp up volume faster, these things actually make each individual truck cheaper to produce, which boosts Tesla's operating margins or makes their vehicles more competitive, though it will still take time. Dan Priestley even repeated Elon Musk's SpaceX joke that at Tesla they make the impossible late, which is exactly what's happened. But from an investment perspective, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things if it takes a few extra years to deliver a better, more refined truck. This will pay off in the long term, especially since the competition literally can't be seen with a telescope. They don't even have prototypes that can do what Semi is capable of, let alone a new 50,000 unit factory being built and megacharger technology that Tesla is beginning to deploy at scale. This update actually sent Tesla stock up 6% the day it was announced, even though it will still take a year and a half before the factory is ready. But investors seem to be getting very excited about this seemingly small opportunity that Tesla is working on, recognizing its potential to be much larger than it appears at first glance. So how significant do you believe Tesla's semi's weight reductions will be for the future of electric trucks? And what role do you think partnerships with major corporations like Pepsi will play in the adoption of electric semi trucks and the rollout of Tesla's megachargers? Don't forget to watch my last video on Tesla coming after Warren Buffett's car insurance businesses. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.